Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, your host here on Pacific Partnerships for Education. Uh, this new show here on Think Tech Hawaii, and it's all just it's all summed up in its in its title. It's all about the various partnerships that we're doing across the Pacific for education. How Prel is working. Prel is Pacific Resources for Education and Learning. Uh, is working with all kinds of other agencies and groups around the Pacific. And with me today in the Think Tech Studios, I have Dr. Jojo Peter. Peter, welcome, Jojo. Thank you very much. Ethan. Glad, glad to have you here. Dr. Peter is, is a, a wide-ranging expert. He got his uh, bachelor's in communication at the University of Guam, has two masters, uh, in, one in Pacific Island Studies and one in history from UH Manoa, and a doctorate in education from UH Manoa also. Thank you. He is, served, or is serving as a commissioner on the Hawaii Civil Rights Commission, uh, worked with the Legal Aid Society. Uh, he's a member of the Limited English Proficiency Task Force, uh, Department of Labor and uh, Industrial Relations for the state, community organizer for innumerable groups, host of uh, Micronesian Connection on Olelo Television, has had positions at Kapiolani College, UH Manoa, and uh, College of Micronesia. So, a wide ranging history. <laughs> Well, my, my background right now, I work for uh, mm. uh, Prel yes. as a researcher. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're going we're gonna to sort of go over the uh, uh, general idea about uh, Micronesians in Hawaii and, and what impacts this is having, particularly in terms of the education uh, uh, in the state and all. So I thought we might start by looking at sort of the scope of the issue. What, what, do you have a sense about what proportion of Hawaii students uh, across the education spectrum are migrants from Micronesia at this point? Well, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a bit more complicated uh, uh, issue than just having like outright numbers mm -hmm. and, and, and that is if there were any uh, <laughs> uh, reliable number that we can uh, point to to say, you know, there's this many students mm -hmm. in the system. I think there's just no data out there that we can use. Uh, uh, there's also a, an issue of uh, you know, sometimes when you you know the, we talk about Kova migrants uh, mm -hmm. population and students, in this case, students in the school system, there you don't differentiate between uh, the group that that move from the Kova nations, uh, <clears throat> RMI, Federated States of Micronesia and Republic of Palau, differentiated from the ones who were born uh, and raised. Uh, of the same ethnic background, mm -hmm. yeah, and those are U.S. citizens, right? And uh, so, it's, it, it's a, a, a smaller number will be like a, fa a fraction of that uh, overall number would be the ones that moved from uh, Micronesia to uh, to uh, uh, to Hawaii right. and are enrolled in the school system. Sure. So, a, a, a long non-answer to your question <laughs> is that. You know, we don't have any reliable data on that, uh, you know, on that number of uh, Kova citizen uh, right. students in the in the school system. But there is a, a you know, from <clears throat> I think what the, tend to be the highlight is uh, the issues that is uh, related to serving those students, right? Uh, you know, with a, a level of education and. Uh, and uh, tra transition into the school system. Right, and as you point out, it's a, it's a very diverse population. In some cases, the parents or even grandparents may have moved here generations ago. The mm -hmm. kids have been raised in a very Western yeah. environment. In other cases, these are people literally, right. you know, fresh, right. fresh off of, of, a, of a, and, a very different yeah, situation. Yeah, and I, and I think you also have to look at the multi-generation now mm -hmm. that have gone through the school system. I think that, for example, the ones that moved here after in the 80s, the Compact of Free Association, this treaty with the open immigration uh, um, law in it mm -hmm. uh, was enacted in 1986. So the ones that moved here, the, uh, there, I mean, shortly thereafter, uh, as as children and mm -hmm. participated in the school system, now their children right. are in the school system. Right, and hopefully having less trouble in the school system. From yeah, having you know, have, but... having grown up in the right. system, so they have uh, pretty much the same level of engagement as the other ethnic groups, right. and same opportunity, you know, you know, of engagement as the other group um, in the school system. Right. So this sort of sort of gets at the, the point that Paul Haddock brought up in our <laughs> last show on this series was 
uh, particularly coming people from the, the smaller outer islands, have a, a very different sort of cultural view of education and school, formal schooling, because mm -hmm. if you're grow, growing up on an island of say three or 400 people, or you've lived there your whole life, your grandparents, mm -hmm. their parents have lived yeah. there, school yeah. is a very different beast. You know? Right, it's, and it, it's, not, it, it's not just the students, right. it's the way their family and the community it, engages it, exactly. with uh, uh, schooling and education as a right. Western concept. Yeah, yeah. Totally different from learning, yeah. lifelong, I mean, life skills learning right, on the, uh, outside of the classroom. Right, on the yeah. islands, it's much yeah. more important to yeah. understand your relationships right. with other people, your duties right. and obligations right. to them, their expectations from them, how right. you get by on, yeah. on what you and got. And kind of think about it like, a, like this way is, on, on a small island, like you say, that's of, of 400 people, uh, you learn how to plant taro mm -hmm. outside of the classroom, mm -hmm. how to do fish and how to pick breadfruit and stuff. But you, and then in the classroom, you learn about science. Right. You know, something a bit as abstract. And sometimes the curriculum doesn't always, you know, mesh the two right. successfully. Right. You know, to, to make, uh, make Western learning, you know, a, a part of, uh, you know, lifelong learning. Right. So this is actually, actually one of the, the things uh, I was working on for five years, uh, Project Water for Life. Mm -hmm. And we had, would get communities together working on improving their access to drinking water, uh, taking a, uh, for instance, a ground spring and putting, uh, lining it with concrete, putting a mm -hmm, mm -hmm. brick wall around it, security screening roof, running some piping outside of it, so that it was protected and mm -hmm. stayed clean. And this was, the idea was to make the application of science or STEM or other right. science, technology, engineering, and math, mm -hmm more of a vital part and help people mm -hmm. see that, mm -hmm. yeah, this is real useful stuff to yeah. be able to know about this yeah. and hopefully engage yeah. more students and more community members in learning. Right. You know, in and, and when people talk about like cultural learning, mm -hmm. you know, let's look at taro, for example, mm -hmm. how, how farming. It's a very cultural uh, centerpiece of our culture mm -hmm. and our cultural practice in, in, in the islands, you know, here in Hawaii and in, but very little has to do with what goes on in the classroom, mm -hmm. you know. So if you have that disconnect, then, you know, chances are, you know, you, you know, you, you, there is still this you know, disparity between what goes on in the classroom and what you're, you know, what you're learning as culture, quote unquote, mm -hmm. you know. So there's always that, you know, separation there. Right. And so the real trick here is to try to make that kind of diversity into a strength where, right. where these students who are coming in right. bring knowledge that Hawaii's students may not have mm -hmm. and share that with them and, and right. become seen as resources of, right. of, of right. valuable learning, valuable information, right. rather than simply as kids who are different and who don't fit in and who don't understand what. Right. what you know. and, and I think the, 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 the more diverse uh, the background of the student population the richer the educational experience uh, for all the students uh, from the community, uh, regardless of the background. And I think that's a, it's a very worldly attitude towards uh, learning. Absolutely. You know? and, Absolutely. Uh, it makes sense. Uh, it just doesn't always practice. Right. You know? Right. You, you clearly, in, in any sensible way of thinking about it, you want it a great diversity of perspectives mm -hmm. and viewpoints. And it's going to make for rich classroom right. discussions about well, gee, what about doing it mm -hmm. this way? Well, mm -hmm. you know, my culture might approach this, right. this issue a different way. We might do it this way, mm -hmm. and somebody else from another culture mm -hmm. will chime in with yet another idea, yeah. and you'll get bubbling mm -hmm. up in ways of bringing ideas together uh, and thinking about things more critically rather than having everybody just sort of think the same way, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, given that, wh why do you think it's, it is so commonly sort of this issue is framed as more of a problem than, than as an opportunity, right? <laughs> it's a good question. I think it's uh, along with everything else. Uh, that is the experience of uh, Micronesian population here in Hawaii. I think it has sort of turned uh, into a, a lot of missed opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, missed opportunities to do the right thing first and first, foremost. Missed opportunity to learn, uh, to embrace contribution of people uh, from the first background. I think what has happened is uh, it, it, it sort of got caught up in, the, in uh, all of the negative backlash mm -hmm. uh, 
that uh, unfortunately has dominated the uh, the local. I mean the public discourse, uh, be it uh, you know public law, public policy, um, healthcare, uh, and education, and just community and uh, social interaction in, in general. I think what has happened is all of the, uh, for example, the the bullying and the racist jokes has sort of uh, gotten precedence over uh, any meaningful um, engagement between uh, teachers and students and students and students from different backgrounds. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's also a lack of um, uh, involvement, so to speak, on, on both sides of the, you know, the coin. Because of maybe cultural and different traditional attitude towards uh, different attitude towards education and the role of uh, community mm -hmm. in education. It's not necessarily a, a, a deficit uh, model or a deficit background to have. Like back home, uh, when, we, when, when we talk about education, there's a clear delineation between you know, the role of schools and school officials mm -hmm. and community and, uh, you know, uh, Society. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, communities, uh, parents, and families. You mm -hmm. know, uh, what goes on in the school is the prerogative of the of the teachers and the principals, mm -hmm. and you don't want to disrupt that. And I think you'll be responsible to, to do so. Mm -hmm. As where here, there is a lot of this encouragement for involvement mm -hmm. now for a population that hasn't always, you know, done that. You don't quite always know how to do it, and I think there is a lot of a. Uh, uh, there's there's a need for you know some some education on both sides of the the coin uh, both sides of the equation where they said you know these are the things that we need from community and these are the things that community must uh, can get from you know right so it's, a, know. So it's, it's sort of a, a misunderstanding in a lot of ways of, mm -hmm. of cultural norms yeah. where in Chuk or Palau or somewhere, it might be considered very almost <laughs> rude for mm -hmm. parents to, to question or teach or ask what's right. going on in the school. Right. right. Whereas here, that's sort of expected. And when right. parents don't do it, they're regarded as, as right. sort of failing in their duty yeah. somehow. Yeah. And parents and parents group are supposed to be watchdogs for right. what goes on in the school. Right. And yeah. they call out teachers. Can you imagine something like that back home for community members to be asked to call out teachers? Who are the teachers you're calling out? You're calling out sometimes your own relatives, right? And that is, you know, disrespectful, uh, right. irresponsible. I mean, socially irresponsible, right. many that, times. That yeah, yeah. Permeates down to students too, and right. their, their cultural right. attitudes they've been brought up with to yeah. not question adults, to right. be respectful, yeah. to keep their yeah. eyes downcast in the presence of their, mm -hmm. or even sometimes in the presence of older family yeah. members, right? Uh, but you know, those are the inherent differences between a, a Western school model of right. learning and a traditional. Right. Model of learning where yeah. critical skills is sometimes, you know, misunderstood or even overused, in in across culture. You know, uh, sometimes it's not always used, or it's uh, not always, uh, you know, done in in a responsible manner. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, uh, the skills you need in one situation are entirely different from those you need in another. There's an, an old saying. I forget who the author of this was, but he said if. Uh, if the Aborigines in Australia developed the IQ test, presumably all Western civilization would flunk. Yeah. Now, I mean, it's true. Yeah. If I were dropped in the middle of the Australian outback, I'd be dead in a day. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, and it's true. folks yeah. there can survive on mm -hmm. essentially nothing mm -hmm. because they've grown up there to understand. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there, there's tremendous differences here. Um, so what I'll tell you what do you what do you think we can really uh, what can we do, I guess, is, is sort of the question. Uh, or or who, who needs to take the lead, maybe, is the better way of putting that in, in terms of helping turn this, what's often, so often seen as a challenge, into an opportunity? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a complicated situation because structurally, I think the community, uh, the, the Micronesian communities here tend to be a little bit more diverse than we think, mm -hmm. than most people would assume. You know, you, people will sometimes ask this question like, who should we go to? Like, who's the leader? Mm -hmm. Or uh, uh, assuming that there is a one person right. that can affect all of that changes. Right. And we all hope that, you know, we all, it's like, we hope that that's, uh, it's as easy as that, but it's not. 
uh, you have, uh, you know, different groups, like uh, you have church groups, uh, but even the church groups are limited in their own scopes. Mm -hmm. You know, people go to the churches to hear about, you know, church things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you bring in all of that other things, you know, it, it, it sort of oversteps the, the role of the, but church leaders are good community leaders, leaders too. Excellent. Uh, we also need to kind of like work within the structure of um, providing services, social mm -hmm. services, and, and use that approach for uh, educational en engagement as part of the services. Because the same people will come to outreach, for example, to look for healthcare mm -hmm. uh, coverage, right. are also people who have issues with. with uh, so sometimes when I when we do outreach, you will hear more than just what you're you're listening for. Exactly. And okay. sometimes you know, so if you set up the system in a way, your outreach or your 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 community engagement in a way that. Uh, it, it receives it, or it takes in all of this uh, and start building around those uh, voices that you're hearing from the community. Uh, we're we're going to dig into this more deeply. I'm told we, we need to take our little midway break here. Uh, Jojo Peters with, with me here today. Uh, I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Pacific Partnerships in Education, and we'll be back in one minute. Drive. It's nice to know you're gonna get home alive. Plan for fun and responsibility. Choose the DD. Captain of our team. It's the DD. For every game day, assign a designated driver. And you're back here with me, Ethan Allen, your host here on Pacific Partnerships in Education here on Think Tech Hawaii. With me today in the studios is Dr. Jojo Peter, and we're talking about the, all the, the complex issues around Micronesians who have emigrated to uh, Hawaii here some many years ago, some yesterday, yeah. and particularly the impacts on the educational systems. And uh, Jojo was, br was bringing up uh, earlier a, a very interesting point about we often think it's a matter of sort of teaching as a, sort of a one-way flow, teaching mm -hmm. the, the Micronesian population about how to get along in the culture. Mm -hmm. But in reality, this system works much better if, if everyone learns, right? If, if those people who are trying to provide educational help or legal help or medical help mm -hmm. uh, or employment help or whatever to, to mm -hmm. Micronesians, if they actually talk one-on-one -on -one with new immigrants, figure out what it is these people really want, what mm -hmm. it is they really need, where the precise stumbling blocks mm -hmm. are, right? Then they're... Yeah, if they can get away from their sort of preconceptions of, of what the what this population needs mm -hmm. and understand it's a bunch of different people who need a bunch of different things, yeah. there may be some commonality. And, and I think sometimes people are are sort of surprised by when you tell them when you talk about diversity of the background of the, mm -hmm. the group that we're dealing with, they're like, oh, there's that many languages. Right. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Oh okay. There's this many, you know, groups, silent groups, and you know, this many, uh, you know, uh, just there's the incredible amount of diversity. They're assuming that 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 you're able to you know you know that you want to learn about that because mm -hmm. I mean in order to be able to help someone uh, as a social services or a, a social service provider or a teacher or an official then it helps to know the background of the people that and you have to be willing to learn it right. you know I mean it's not just the, you know just say, okay let's have a once a you know once a year teacher training. Thing, right. But it's sort of an ongoing thing, you know, to know the, the, the your student population and to know the background of your students and, and for your students, to, I mean, the family to know who you are. Right. And, and I think once those barriers are, are, are taken down, 
they will see that it's a lot more. They have what we have a lot more in common that, yeah, we have previously ignored. Right. You know, and that's when learning and that's when true engagement really takes place. Right. And I mean, a good example of this can be seen in, for instance, medical treatment. People come here and need need to go into our medical system, mm -hmm. and if the folks within the medical system do not understand the cultural mm. by I want to say biases, but cultural backgrounds yeah. uh, of their patients. And there may be, in some Micronesian cultures, is very specific gender roles, for instance. And you know, if some mm. young female nurse comes on into an older gentleman, yeah. sort of, you know, drop your pants and da da da. I mean, this is yeah. considered very inappropriate, right? And, I think it's inappropriate yeah. for most of the, <laughs> right. the grassroots culture. Right, but, right. Yeah. And yet, yeah. in, in sort of Western yeah. medicine culture, this is hey, yeah. you yeah. do this, you know. Uh, yeah. and having some sensitivity to that, on, on, so you know, the medical profession yeah. should learn. Mm -hmm. Wherever possible, to try to respect those yeah, yeah. Uh, cultural norms as much as possible, yeah. Uh, yeah, and and vice versa. Yeah. Uh, the... And and also just just also understanding the situation that the people find themselves in here. Right. You know, they, you know, who, who, where do they live? Uh, how much they have to deal with on a regular basis, in order to be because education is just one of the many things. Oh, yeah that families face and it's right. true for all families right. you know it's an important component of what goes on as a family uh, for for the family but and it's an important investment so people are willing to put the time into it mm -hmm. but also you also there's also health right. there's economic there's housing right. there's putting food on the table right. so sometimes when you know kids don't show up for field trip you know, because they don't have the money. Sometimes that is a real issue. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people find that hard to believe. All right. But it is actually a real issue that sometimes parents may not have that money mm -hmm. for the kid to go on field trip. Sometimes the hard decision is made that they take that limited resource and apply it, you know, right. to a more critical, uh, you know, problem. Right, and again, the, yeah. the same sort of misunderstandings happen in all across all the different sectors, right? I mean, in, in the legal sector, again, there, there's very different mm -hmm. sort of views in a place like Chuk, where much of the, even the basic title to land is often mm -hmm. very unclear, right, as to, yeah. to who really owns what piece of land. And, and that has been one of the major, right. major criticism about those islands, right. that is that they don't conform, right. conform to you know, do those things that would spur, you know, quote unquote development. Right. I was, I was yeah. talking the other day to a gentleman who worked for the Bank of Hawaii when, and did for a number of years, went out to Micronesia and mm. was responsible for doing mortgages. Mm. And he would try to do mortgage yes. things out in Chuk, for instance, and, yeah. you know, try to report back about what yeah. he was trying to do. And I mean, both people he dealt with in Chuk didn't mm. understand why he was doing it and the people his bosses couldn't understand why he couldn't get this simple paperwork done. Even right? a simple thing as a lease, you know, trying right. to get somebody, you know, somebody to sign off on that lease when the land is family owned, right. it's owned by every member of that lineage. Right. You know, it gets very tricky. Yes. And I know because we, we try to, you know, we, one of our responsibilities in, when running the college is to do facility improvement. Mm -hmm. And that means land and, you, you know, you try to get a piece of paper you know, signed by whom you think is a bona fide representative, right. you know, of the property, then you also get into this other, you know, people that, you know, that have equal claim. Right, yeah. And rightfully so, right. too, yeah. And again, we, we, there may be some odd parallels here in Hawaii in bits and pieces. Um, <laughs> yeah, in a way, and, and that's what happened in Hawaii. Once you turn the land into private ownership, then, right. It's easy to dispose of it as a commodity, right? As where well, you know that's still very difficult back home because, you know, it's still traditionally owned by families. Right. So I gather in Chuk there's something like 17 million dollars sitting around waiting to build new schools, but they nobody can get clear title to land to build a school. That has on. been the case yeah, for, for some time. Yeah, I guess. And, and it seems there there should be a solution to that somehow, but mm. it's, it's a very it defies easy but solutions. It, it depends on. You know, you know who who gets, you know, what system gets mm -hmm. precedence over, right? You know, that access to the land property. Right. Yeah. So, um, in the last few minutes here, let's let's talk a little bit about about what uh, 
what kinds of resources are available and where they can be found here for, for people either looking to better understand this issue or people coming in to get, get help. Do you have, have suggestions to anyone who might, might be, uh, any of the viewers who might be watching? Well, well, first, one of those things I've always wanted to encourage before we get into that, deep into that discussion is we need to encourage more, more students from Micronesia to, to get into education. Mm -hmm. You know, to get into, to, you, know, you know, training to, you know, to be teachers and to be officials and, uh, you know, and administrators in, in schools. Because, you know, it's easier for children to learn from people from a place when you look across the table and there's somebody familiar, mm -hmm. you know, to you. That you say, oh, yeah, okay, there's, you know, it's a place of, you know, that you're comfortable, right. that it, 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 it demands your respect. Yeah. And uh, you know, and, and it welcomes you. Right. So yeah, that's one. You know, to encourage more Micronesians to be. You know, to. The other thing is, you know, to get more <clears throat> schools. You know, the school system to open mo up more to you know cultural uh, training, mm -hmm. uh, engagement with uh, families. Um, you know, Prel is a, is an organization that. You know, it's in a position to provide those services, as well as we are Oceania is one of our mm -hmm. uh, uh, service uh, centers um, that was just started about two, two, three years ago. Uh, there are a lot of uh, resource people in the community. I think it's a matter of, you know, just organizing those resources yeah, you know, more in a way. Right. Another thing is to pay people to do that kind of work, right. you know, because here's an issue that can be taken care of. By having cultural, you know, advocates, right. uh, people who who can work as liaisons between uh, you and the community, yep. yeah. in the absence of having like good cadre of Micronesian right. teachers, right. you know, hopefully that's going to be addressed in the future. But for now, you know, that's, those are the kind of scaffolding that we may need to. Well, this is great. Uh, we we could obviously go on for some time about this, but we are unfortunately out of time. So uh, we're going to wrap up uh, another episode of Pacific Partnerships in Education. Dr. Jojo Peter, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. And I hope you'll join us again in two weeks for another episode. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, signing off until then.